Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a Lozmandy AZ-8 Alt as mount. What is it? Well, it's a telescope mount meant to hold optical tubes. Its design is called Alt Azimuth. That is a fancy term that just means it moves up and down and left and right. So those of you who follow me regularly on this channel know that I have lamented the fact that these simple mounts are sort of going away. Everybody today seems to want either a computerized go-to mount, astrophotography gear, or a smart scope. But I think there's still a place for this old-fashioned type of mount that you just move by yourself with you in the night sky and a telescope on its side. So, I get a lot of questions about this product, and I think it's because it's been around for quite some time. I think most of us know that this product exists, but I don't see very many of them out there. And when I do get questions, they usually fall into one of two categories. The first question is, is the AZ-8 as well made and as well finished as Laws Mandy's other products? The second question I get, is it worth almost $2,000 to use a simple alt as mount manually that just goes up and down and left and right? Let's try to answer these questions. Let's get into it. So first of all, this design is not new or unique there are at least two other products that have a similar kind of design. The first one is the Explore Scientific Twilight 2, as opposed to the Twilight 1, which only has one capability to mount a telescope and is similar, if not identical, to the SV Boney SV225 that I reviewed earlier. The problem with the Twilight 2 is I can never figure this out. Is that product available or isn't it? It seems like it's on the market, but then when you go to order one, it's not available but then it shows up again, but it's overseas under a different nameplate. Check its availability if you want one of those to see if it's available at the time that you want one. Those are around $500. They are substantially less than this, so it might be a way for you to sort of dip your toe into the water here to see if this kind of mount is right for you. The second one is the Rowan mount out of the UK. It is amazingly even more expensive than the AZ-8. Okay, so how much does this thing cost? It's a bit of a moving target to hit because when this thing first came out, you could get the mount and the tripod legs for $995. Some people were protesting it back then, but I think we would long for those days when you could get this entire setup for $1,000. Today, just the mount head, this thing above the pier here, is $1,000 by itself. If you want the tripod legs, these are the GM8 style legs. It Price goes up to around $1,800. This one has a pier extension on it to get it up a little bit. If you wanted to, you could put the Gemini system on there. The Gemini has an alt as mode. Put everything on there, including the counterweight options and all of the other things you could buy for this. You could easily spend well over $3,000 on one of these. But configured the way this one is, just a little over $2,000 and about 36 pounds as you see it here. All right, so there's a lot going on here and it looks very complicated, but it's actually a very simple device. Most of these knobs and dials here are just at the service of the fact that this thing goes up and down and left and right. Now, the plate here, the saddle plate, can take either the Vixen plate or the D plate. So the Vixen plate here is the smaller of the two. Looks like this. And these are used for small to mid-sized telescopes. The D plate here, which goes on the outside here, is more larger telescopes. The point where this breaks is usually around 13 pounds or so. Below about 13 pounds, it tend to be this. Over about 13 pounds, it tend to be this. You'll find some variation on this. 13 pounds, by the way, is about the weight of a schmidt cassegrain of eight inch diameter or a four inch fully loaded apochromatic refractor. Okay, so let's say you wanted to put something on here. Let's just go ahead and use this one. Take this optical tube off the equatorial mount, and you can put this on either way, but I find it's instructive to come out the top just so that you can see that it is in fact engaging. And increase the tension knob here, and there you go. You can observe with it like this. If you wanted to, you could put a second optical tube on here, this 
And you know what? You can have a lot of fun putting different things on here, different combinations, just to see what happens. So once you have the optical tubes on here, there are two ways to move the telescopes. The first way is just to grab the optical tubes like you see me doing here. The second way is through the slow motion controls. And there's one here for the azimuth. And there's one here. I'll turn this around so you can see it for the altitude control. You may also want to set the tension knobs. There are two of them, one for each axis, and they may be a little bit hard to see from where you're standing, but this is the one for the altitude. You can turn this, and this is the one for the azimuth. It's down here. I'll say this for the mount. It folds up into a remarkably compact package. Fold with the legs, you'll barely know it's in the car. So again, this product has been out for quite some time and there have been some minor variants through the years. Most of these are cosmetic. For example, here's an AZ-8 owned by a club member. If you know what you're looking at, you'll see that it is slightly different from the one that I have here. And the one that I have here is slightly different from the one that you see on Laws Mandy's website. I don't think functionally they're gonna be all that different, but just be aware, if you buy one, it's going to look maybe slightly different than the one you see here. Well, okay. Put some scopes on here and you're ready to go. Is it plug and play? Mostly, yes. There are a couple of concerns here. I'm gonna run through some of these. None of them are serious, but I do wanna point these out so you don't get surprised. Three things. Number one, be careful mixing and matching types of telescopes. In particular, be careful putting a long reflector and a long refractor or schmidt cassegrain side by side. The reason should be obvious. On a reflector, the eyepiece is at the top and a refractor and an schmidt cassegrain the eyepiece is in the back, you may have trouble finding a good happy medium in terms of the height of the tripod. Secondly, if you put two telescopes side by side, it might stand to reason that they would both be pointing in exactly the same direction. If you've ever done this, you know this is rarely, if ever, true. It's not the mount's fault, it is machined correctly. Rather, the problem lies in the variations between plates and rings of different telescopes. They're gonna be off just a little bit, and a little bit is enough to annoy you. Not only that, if you have two schmidt cassegrains like I have here, the optical axis of both SCTs may be off a little bit, and again, at 2,000 millimeters here for the eight inch schmidt cassegrain, it's not gonna take much before things are off just a little bit. Now, I got a message once from somebody who said he wanted to do the side-by-side -side arrangement because he wanted him and his wife to be looking at the same target at the same time. She doesn't like finding things, so he would find things on his side, and then she would be see it on the other side, and they could both enjoy the views together. How romantic, isn't it? Well, what he found out is that it's not exactly the same. He, he learned to compensate because he knew exactly where to put the object a little bit off-center so that his wife would get the right field of view. Well, didn't quite work out for that guy, but let's give him props for being romantic. Now, the third issue here is one of balance. Now, there's nothing stopping you here from just putting one telescope on one side and just calling it good. But if you've ever done this with one of these mounts, you know it isn't quite that simple. When things are off balance, you can have some issues. This is the reason, for example, that Laws Mandy sells a counterweight kit. Very often, I find that the best counterweight is another optical tube. At least it isn't dead weight, and you can look through it. So why does this matter? Well, with the bearings being the way that they are, if the weight imbalance is off by what I found, seven pounds or so one side or the other, you can have a mild chattering or cogging effect when you're turning this axis here. You can't see it here, but you'll know it when you see it. There's a rhythmic sort of chattering that happens as you turn this knob. Might not bother you, but it started to bother me after a while. The solution is to restore the balance, get the two optical tubes or the two weights somewhere in that seven pound differential range. The same also holds true for the azimuth. If the weight is imbalanced fore and aft, you may have to slide the optical tube forwards and backwards. And keep in mind, if you're switching between a very light eyepiece and a very heavy eyepiece, for example, it may be enough to throw off the balance, so you have to do this again. Of all of the things I'm talking about, again, this is probably gonna be the one that bothers you the most. And finally, I think the one thing I might make as a suggestion here, I might want these knobs on both sides. And the reason being, you're gonna be walking around this thing and the knob, the slow motion controls, are only on one side. And it can be hard in the dark to figure out, well, where am I? And you wind up sort of grabbing things in the dark. Might be a suggestion there. 
So my friend and I had our AZ-8s out here. If you notice, he has the much bigger G11 legs. I found that to be steadier than the GM8 style legs here. Your call on that one, do you want to pay for the G11 legs and do you want to haul them around? Got a C6 here and an 8-inch Meech Cassegrain. This was okay, but what I really liked was having two refractors side by side. Instead, that's my preference. We had a nice observing night here, and if you look carefully, you'll see the moon in the upper right-hand corner. That was the night that the moon occulted the Pleiades, and we enjoyed that view. So again, this is what I settled on. This is what I liked. Two Apos side by side, a three inch Takahashi FC 76 at about eight pounds, and the FS 102 at around 14 pounds on the other side. Again, this works well, and let's face it, it looks really cool, doesn't it? So I've had people ask, just how much weight can you put on this thing? And Los Mandy's website has an astonishing weight claim of 35 pounds per side. Will it do that? Well, you're going to have to ask somebody else because I'm not going to go anywhere near that. The most I did in my experimentation was two C8s side by side. So let's get back to the original questions that I asked at the beginning of this review. Number one, is the Lozmandy AZ-8 well made enough and up to the standards of their other mounts? And the answer to that is an emphatic yes. Not only that, this is personal choice and there's some subjectivity here, but I'm going to say that the AZ-8 is my favorite looking Lozmandy mount of all time. People who came in here just instinctively started doing this. The second question is a little bit harder to answer. Is this rig worth almost $2,000? Well, I can tell you after playing with this, I think I want one of these. This one doesn't belong to me. It's got to go back to the club member. But I think eventually I could see one of these in my future. As of right now, I have an SV225 and the Vixen Porta. Those seem to be serving my needs pretty well right now, so I'm not in a huge hurry. But I think if I were to see one of these that came up on the market at a decent price, I think I might just go for it. So there you have it, folks, a look at the Lozmandy AZ-8. I hope this review has helped you to decide if this product is right for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.